Our next case is Day versus United States. And the first question is, what was the nature of the dispute? And essentially, that's another way that the professor may ask you to essentially state the facts. And here is the uh, nature of the dispute in, 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 the, in the Day case. Uh, this was a, a contract, excuse me, this was a contract dispute for a, uh, for construction concerning a, uh, a temporary, uh, to build a bulkhead and, and temporary dam in order to protect the canal and locks at the cascades of the Columbia River. Now this contract work was done uh, as authorized by uh, a special federal statute and essentially what happened was uh, there was work that was done by the contractor, there was a change of circumstances during the course of his work and he wanted to be compensated for it. So essentially that was the nature of, of this particular uh, dispute. Um, there was an appropriation of $326,000 for a continuing improvement at the Cascades and um, the statute said that the work would not exceed $1.4 million. Now what happened in this particular case? What, 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 was, what, was, what, what, did, what did the contractor promise to do? And that was very important to the outcome in this case because the court, uh, the U.S. Supreme Court uh, really focused on that. And, and the court said that the contract, uh, under the contract, the contractor made a, an agreement to furnish such labor and material in place, et cetera, as may be necessary to complete the canal and locks at certain rates the total of all payments not to exceed $1.7 million, the amount of the two just mentioned sums, okay? Now, there was uh, a specific agreement made by this particular contractor. Now, what happened? What was, what, was the, what was the difficulty in this case? Well, the difficulty arose in this case because there was uh, a bulkhead that was, cre that was constructed by the government. The government erected this bulkhead, and essentially the, the bulkhead was erected to protect the work that was being done by the contractor. So that imagine, you know, this wall that the government has constructed to hold back uh, any additional flooding from the river, and that was put in place by the government uh, to protect the work. Well, unfortunately, there was uh, another flood during this period of time that exceeded the bulkhead. The water started coming over this, this wall that the, gov the government had constructed. So the contractor had to spend time and money and, and effort uh, to create a higher wall to, to protect the work he was doing on this, on this particular canal. So the contractor has, has brought this suit because the government uh, refused to pay for the cost of this uh, additional work. What was the principle of law that the Supreme Court cited in this, in this case? And here's what the court said. One who makes a contract never can be absolutely certain that he will be able to perform it when the time comes. And the very essence of it is that he takes the risk within the limits of his undertaking. The modern cases may have abated somewhat the absoluteness of the older ones in determining the scope of the undertaking by the literal meaning of the words alone, and there are certain citations. But when the scope of the undertaking is fixed, that is merely another way of saying that the contractor takes the risk of the obstacles to that extent. So the court is saying that the contractor takes the risk. Now what is the court's rationale in reaching this conclusion? I mean, I mean essentially what this means is that this contractor has, uh, has put out this money for uh, protecting uh, the work that he's doing. And the court is saying that, you know, he, he's taking the risk. Well, here's an experienced contractor. You look at, 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 at the, at the uh, and, and analyze the facts for yourself and, 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 and you know, keep up with what the court is doing. Uh, here is a contractor. He's, he's an experienced contractor. He has uh, knowledge of, of, of what he's doing. He, he has done this this kind of work before, and he should anticipate, based on his experience, things that might happen. Now, in submitting his bid, his bid is supposed to include all of these additional uh, factors, and he signed the agreement based upon his own experience, and the court is essentially saying, essentially saying that 
be, because of his experience, because he has signed this agreement, um, he is taking, he is assuming the risk that his quote to the government will be adequate to compensate him for any of these other possible uh, consequences. What was the court's rationale in reaching this decision? And here's what the court said. That if the claimants put up temporary defenses against the water, even though not bound to do so by the contract, they were doing what, was, what it was for their own interest and safety to do. And that in the absence of an actual contract to pay for it by either party, there is no ground for shifting the cost to the United States. And that's pretty self-explanatory. The, the Supreme Court said, uh, uh, you have an agreement, uh, there's, you know, there's a, a flood. Yeah, of course, you didn't know for, for certainly there would be a flood, but um, uh, it, it, this, is, this is something that you've contracted for, and the government, the, the, the burden should not be shifted to the government. 